You wanna play games? Okay. Say hello to my little friend! Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and I'm sorry to go all Tony Montana on you, but I had to just mess around because I did get a little crazy last night, and I've installed a second Zyk drive to my Mac Mini setup. So I now have a RAID 0. Look at the speeds I'm getting. Very impressive. I've been letting this run for like 10 minutes now. We're not thermal throttling. This is where my home folder is now. So here's my new RAIDed two Zyk drives into one, four terabytes, which Apple would charge you, what was it, $1,200, I think, for four terabytes in a Mac Mini. This setup cost about $450 for two Zyk drives and two Orico NVMEs. They are rated at 7,000 megabytes per second. So we're definitely hitting the peak bus speed of the Thunderbolt 4 bus, which is rated at 6,000 megabytes per second. So we're getting really close to that with the Zyk drives. So I'm pretty impressed and I'm gonna keep it this way. I also took my Acasis enclosure slash hub, which has two NVMEs in it. And I put the two team group in there and I created a RAID 0 with them as well. And that is now my four terabyte time machine backup. So it's a pretty cool setup I got going right now. I don't know if I recommend this in general for people, but the reality is, is Apple's internal drives, their SSDs are in a RAID 0 as well. That's how they get the great speeds. They put two NAND chips in there and create a RAID 0. So if one of those goes belly up, you're out of luck. Same with this setup. If one of my drives dies, I lose everything, but I have a time machine backup and I will be backing up my time machine backup every once in a while onto a regular non-RAIDed drive. So this is pretty cool. You know, it's the base model Mac mini that only gets like 3000 megabytes per second read and write. And look at what I'm getting now with a RAID 0. I got four terabytes links in the description to all the devices I used for this setup. If you want to take your Mac mini to the next level, you can do this. It's really simple to set up. I'm also using this hub that Acasis sent me for all the extra ports that I need for my mini SD card reader, USB A ports, 2.5 gigabit ethernet. I can connect two monitors off of it if I wanted to. Dual audio outputs on it, one on the front, one on the back. I have to get some speakers for my little setup here because I'm listening to my, my mixer over here. So it'd be nice to have some little speakers. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that yet, but I am really impressed with this setup and let's see how hot these babies are. They're warm, but they're not sizzling, you know? They're just, they're warm. And the Mac Mini, a little warm. I can't even hear the Mac Mini. And this has been going for quite a while now. I'll show you how to create the RAID. You just go to your disk utility. Right here you can see I got members of a RAID already set up. The two Oricos, which is my home drive. And then I've got the two team groups, which is my time machine. You just come up to disk utility. You go to file and then RAID assistant. And it comes up with this. And this is what I did, RAID zero. And then I hit next and you select the two drives you want. I've already rated my drives. I could select this and another drive, but I'm not gonna do that. You can see I've got two Oracos in a RAID zero and I've got two team groups. And then you just hit format. It erases the drives, of course, and then it takes two drives and turns them into one. And that's why the speed doubles up because you're dedicating the Thunderbolt bus to each drive, an independent Thunderbolt bus from under 3000 megabytes a second to almost 6000 megabytes per second. The only way you're gonna get these really fast speeds is to be connected directly to the back of the Mac mini. If you go through a hub, you'll get close, but you're not gonna get full speeds that I'm getting right here. And we'll just run amorphous disk mark on both drives, the internal Mac mini drive and the external. Again, it's the M4 non-pro Mac mini, 256 gigs. And the external is the Zyk enclosures with the Orico NVMEs. And you can see that the Orico is trouncing on the sequential read and writes, but as it goes down the line there at the very bottom, 
the Mac mini is kind of holding its own. Yet, when I did run a five gig read and write for about 10 minutes or so, all of a sudden the Mac mini got throttled and the write speeds lowered considerably. And this will happen with almost any NVMe. No matter the case, they get super hot and eventually they're gonna throttle and they will slow down, but they're still super fast compared to a SATA SSD. They're still going strong, folks. They're not overheating, they're not throttling, they're still hitting those speeds. So that's been going on the whole time I've been making this video. So I think the Zyke drives are really impressive. I have not had any issues with them. I know they were back ordered for a while because I have helped them sell like a huge amount of these drives. It's insane how many drives I have helped them sell. And it's thanks to you guys. And I get a little commission. So I thank you for that. I really appreciate it. And I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I bought another one and they're working great. Also editing this video off the Zyke drives in the RAID 0 format. And I know it's tempting to get something like the SanDisk drive and try and use that as your external user drive because they're cheap and they seem fast. But the problem is, as soon as you start writing a fair amount of data, they get super hot, they throttle, and their speeds tank. So this is not something you want to be using for your external home folder. You got to use a reliable drive in a nice metal enclosure like the Zyke drive and have good heat dissipation. Otherwise, you're gonna be throttling like crazy. Okay. So here's an example. I'm gonna copy Resident Evil 4 from my applications folder on my Zyk drive, which is super fast, and I'm copying it to the sand disk. You know, at first it said it was gonna take about a minute. Well, it actually wound up taking over five minutes, and you'll see that the speeds just start to drop. If you look over to the right here, we went from 700 megabytes per second. Now we're down at 128 megabytes per second. So it's just an example of how slow these drives get when they start to get hot. And I sped this video way up, but if you look at the graph here, you can see we started off at a good 679 megabytes per second, but then it dropped way down and it stayed down because it's throttling. So I thought I'd do the test in reverse. I'm going to copy Resident Evil 4 from the sand disk to the home RAID. And we're going to look at the temperatures of the Orico drives. And you can see their temperatures are not really changing, at least not yet. We're going to check them again in a minute. But we're going to go check our read speeds from the sand disk. And then we're going to check our write speeds. You can see that Orico is very consistent on its temperatures. And I've been using this throughout making the video. Uh, so we're going to go look at our read speeds from the sand disk. And they are about, you know, 600 megabytes per second. That's about as good as that drive's going to do. So it's not a Thunderbolt drive. It's a USB 3.2 drive, 10 gigabytes. Bits. So we're at the max read speeds that we're going to get from that drive. So now we're going to go look at the write speeds on the home RAID. And as you can see, they're really consistent. So we got 600 read on the sand disk and we've got 600 write on the RAID very consistently. We're going to just let it go, but you can see we're not slowing down. We're not throttling and our temperatures remained good. So that's what you want to see when you're copying a big chunky file. And you know, a game like this has data in it, like lots of little files aside from just a big chunky video file. So we'll look at our temps again and the Orico eh, it heated up, didn't go up to throttling land whatsoever. And uh, the second Orico, same thing. It went up one degree Celsius from 46 to 47 by the end of the copy. All right, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, give me that thumbs up and I'll see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video. You wanna play a game? Okay. Shut up to my little friend!